Ready, set, go! <laughs> I got okay. this. All right, oh, and that goes there, and this goes there. Done, I win. I'm so fast, I'm like lightning. Yes, I win. Slow down. <laughs> you know what game I think we should play next? What? The tortoise and the hare? Look, I'm sorry for bragging. seen anyone faster than me? I don't think so. Hi, Hare. Tortoise? Is that you? You are so slow, I thought you were a rock. How do you think your friends feel when you say they're slow? You always brag about how fast you are. I challenge you to a race. Are you joking? We'll race around the field to the finish line. We need a finish line. On it! Ta-da! Nice! I'll just plant these in the field. On your mark, get set, go! Oh, wow, I'm fast. Hey, Tortoise, did you give up yet? Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> You're so slow, I could eat all of this food and still win. Mm, looks quite delicious. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> hey, Tortoise, you're so slow, I can take a nap and still win. All that food made me quite sleepy. Just one quick nap. I told you slow and steady would win the race. What? Oh, no! What? That's not fair! You might be fast, but you have a lot to learn about being a good friend. Good race. You know, he never gave up. Good race, my friend. And from then on, the tortoise and the hare became very best friends. We should have a contest to see who can jump the highest. How about we just jump together? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> There's your diamond necklace. Cool. What about sunglasses? You look super fancy. Thanks. What do you want to dress up as? Hmm. Ooh, I know. Want to play Country Mouse and City Mouse? Cool. Yeah. Here's my nice green meadow. Nothing but peace and quiet around here. I'm bored. And here's my big, fancy city house. I need a vacation from all this excitement. I'll go visit my cousin in the country. The suitcase is perfect. I'm walking to the country. Walk, walk, walk. I'm walking to the country. Walk, walk, walk. You live far. Cousin, is that you? All the way from the big city. It's so good to see you. So, what do you do in the country? Uh, well, we could play in the grass. Okay. We could watch the stars. Uh, 
Okay. We could look for food. Sometimes I find a nut or berries. Or we could eat what I brought. I've never seen so much food. This is nothing. The giants that live in my house leave stuff like this all over the place. Whoa. So, what do you do in the city? Well, I guess you could say we count the stars too. But in the city, there are big, shiny, flashy lights in every color of the rainbow. Whoa. Yeah, it's mostly going from one adventure to the other. The city sounds amazing. I wish I could visit you. Okay, let's go. We're walking to the city. Walk, walk, walk. We're walking to the city. Walk, walk, walk. Welcome to my mansion. Looks like the giants left quite the feast. This is awesome. We need a city cat. Oh, right. Uh... I got it. You eat. Okay. Mmm. Tasty. That's enough adventure for me, thanks. I miss the nice, quiet country. Oh, well, come visit any time. You too. And so, from then on, the country mouse was grateful for his peaceful life in the country. And the city mouse was grateful for a crazy life in the city. And, and they, they both, both lived happily ever, ever after. after. So, what should we dress up as next? I think I saw some pig ears back there. Cool. of your own. Oh, Mama, I'll miss you. A house of my own? Sounds great. Now, be sure to build strong, safe houses and watch out for the big bad wolf. That big old bully will try to gobble you up. Goodbye, piggies, and good luck. Bye. 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 OK, I'll be the pig who makes my house out of straw. But we don't have straw. Oh, then I'll Use this blanket. Come on, help me. There we go. All done. How fast was that? Now I have some time to relax. See you later, piggies. Bye. I don't think that fort looks very sturdy. Do you? I think I'll make my house out of that cardboard box. But that's a box. That's okay. I'll draw the sticks on. This is my house of sticks. It's way stronger than my brother's and it didn't even take that long to make. See you, sister. Come visit anytime. Now you can be the pig who makes their house out of bricks. Yeah. Here, I'll help you. And I build a strong house that will never come down. That's right. But as the three little pigs 
began to enjoy their new houses, they started to hear scary rumors that... The big bad wolf had come to town! Ow! Mmm, I smell pigs. I bet there's a little pig in here. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. <gasps> ah! Help! 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 Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. Not by the hairs on my chinny chin chins. Then I'll huff. And I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Oh! Oh! Ah! Help! 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 <laughs> little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. Not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. <gasps> Why won't this house fall down? Because this house is made by strong bricks that will never come down. <laughs> Ouch! Go away, bully, and never bother us again. So the big bad wolf went away and never came back again. And the little pig showed her sister and brother how to make strong houses that will never come down. And they all lived happily ever after. The, the end. end. Hey guys, I want to build a really big castle. <laughs> I want to build like a super, super tall tower. Let's do it. Sounds like fun. I'll help. <laughs> the blue one. Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs in a cozy farmhouse with their mother. One day, Mama Pig called her children together and said, Okay, little pigs, you are all grown up. It's time for you to go out into the world and build houses of your own. But beware of the big bad wolf. Build your houses safe and strong, for if he catches you, he'll gobble you up. So. The three little pigs set out on their journey, and they first came to a field of straw. The first little pig saw the bales of straw and said, why, I'll stack this straw into a house nice and quick. And so he said goodbye to his brother and his sister, and in no time at all, he had built a house of straw, and he went inside to relax. The next two pigs, they continued on their journey until they came to a forest. Looking around at all of the sticks of the forest, the second little pig said, Why, I'll use these sticks to build a house that's much stronger than straw. And plus, it'll take me no time at all. So, the second little pig set to work on her house of sticks. It took her a little longer, but in no time she was finished and went into her house to relax. Now, the third little pig was growing very tired, but he continued on the journey until he came to a small town. And he looked around and he saw that there were lots of houses built of bricks. And he thought to himself, why, I'll build a house of bricks that's sturdy and strong. And so he set to work, and he worked long and hard on this house. But at last, he finally finished and had a strong house of bricks, and he went inside to relax. Now, just a few days later, the three little pigs heard that the big bad wolf was seen nearby. And remembering their mother's warning, the three little pigs, they went inside their house and hid from the wolf, hoping to be safe. Now, 
the big bad wolf was out hunting for his dinner and sniffing around until he caught the scent of the first little pig who was hiding inside his house of straw. That hungry wolf, he walked right up to the door and he knocked on the door and he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Huddled nervously inside, the first little pig cried out, not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. The big bad wolf showed his long, sharp teeth and he said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and blew as hard as he could. And the house of straw flew to pieces with bits of straw flying everywhere, leaving that first little pig with no protection from the wolf. And so he squealed and he ran as fast as he could through the forest to his sister's house of sticks. And together they hid from the wolf. Well. That wolf was growing very hungry, and so he chased after that little pig through the forest until he got to the house of sticks. He growled and he knocked on the door and he said, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. And the two little pigs, they hugged each other and they cried out, not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins. Oh, that big bad wolf was very hungry. So he licked his lips and rubbed his belly and he growled, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and blew as hard as he could. And that house of sticks, it shook, but it didn't break. And so the big bad wolf took another big deep breath and blew as hard as he could and that house of sticks flew to pieces, leaving the two little pigs with nothing to protect them from the wolf. And so they squealed and they ran as fast as they could through the forest and into town to hide in their brother's house of bricks. Oh, but the big bad wolf, he chased those little pigs through the forest and into town. And he got to that door and he rapped on it and he growled, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. And the three little pigs huddled inside. They cried out, not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins. And the big bad wolf, he growled, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a big deep breath and blew as hard as he could. But that house of bricks, it stood strong. Oh. The big bad wolf, he took a bigger, deeper breath and blew as hard as he could, but the house of bricks, it didn't budge. The third little pig, he laughed with pride and he said, listen here, wolf, my house of bricks is much too strong to be blown down. And now it's your turn to run. There are no bullies allowed in this town. And so the three little pigs, they burst out of their house and all the other animals in the village did as well. And so together, the three little pigs and all their friends, they chased that big bad wolf right out of town. And he never bothered the three little pigs ever again. <laughs> the end. Once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen they were wonderful rulers, fair, patient, kind, and wise. When they had a daughter, the whole kingdom rejoiced in celebration of the baby's birth. But as the princess grew into a child, it became clear that the king and queen had a problem. Their daughter would not go to sleep. Every night when the king and queen attempted to put their daughter to bed, the princess would talk, sing, yell, and cry. She would climb out of her bed, run around her bed, or even hide under her bed. And when the princess finally fell asleep, her parents would tiptoe to their room. But as soon as they got comfortable in their own bed, they would awake to cries of, Mama, Papa. Returning to their daughter's room, they found the princess wide awake. 
No matter what they tried, no member of the royal family could get a good night's sleep. Now, as time went on, it became clear that the sleepless princess would be a big problem. You see, the king and queen were so tired that they were falling asleep in important meetings, and they no longer had the patience to help the townspeople with their problem. So, the king and queen announced that they would award a chest of gold to anyone who could help their daughter get a good night's sleep. The news spread, and people came from near and far to help the princess get to bed. There were famous storytellers who came to tell the princess epic bedtime stories. The princess listened to every word, but she never fell asleep. Next, there were talented musicians who came to sing to the princess. They sang until the strings on their instruments snapped. Lastly, experts came with gifts of blankets and curtains and clocks, even medicine. But nothing could help the princess get to bed. It was a dark and stormy night, and the king and queen were at their wits' end when they heard a knock at the castle door. There stood a poor woman from the village. Though she worked day and night, she barely had enough money to feed her ten children. She was wet and dirty and carrying her youngest daughter, who was no older than the princess. The queen invited them in and offered them dry clothes and food. It was then that the woman explained, she was there to help the princess fall asleep, as a chest of gold would feed her family for the rest of their lives. Now, the king and queen couldn't imagine that this poor woman could help their daughter get to bed, as so many people before her had failed. Yet, they led her upstairs to where they found the princess, exhausted, but stubbornly bouncing on her bed. The princess climbed down from her bed and approached the young girl. Meanwhile, the woman stopped to take a look at the princess's bed, which was piled high with mattresses and blankets. With a flick of her wrist, the woman began to remove each mattress one by one. And when she got to the bottom, she stopped. The king and queen watched intently. Even the two girls turned to see what was happening. The woman bent down to pick up a small green ball. A pea, she said. No wonder the poor thing couldn't sleep. The woman threw the pea in the trash. There, she said. She'll sleep now. Mark my words. The woman ushered the princess back to her bed. The young girl smiled at the princess. Here, she said, handing her her tattered old teddy bear. The princess took the bear and climbed into bed. It wasn't long before her eyes slipped closed and she was fast asleep. The princess slept all night that night and many nights afterwards. The king and queen were amazed and as promised, they gifted the woman with a chest of gold, but they also awarded her with a home in the royal palace where the two young girls became best friends and everyone lived happily and well rested ever after. That is, until the two friends discovered slumber parties. The end. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.